When crisis hit Northern Rock last year, it was a sure sign that for the global economy, it wasn't going to be business as usual for much longer. But as little as 12 months ago, the waters of the international money markets were calm. Banks were making huge profits and share prices continued to rise. Then, Black Monday hit. £77 billion pounds was wiped off the value of British shares in a single day. But how did this happen? And crucially, what can be done to stop it happening again? In the race for ever greater profits, banks came up with a new way of making money. This involved buying up bundles of debt comprised of things like mortgages, loans and consumer credit. These bundles were repackaged and sold on from institution to institution until few people were completely sure what was even behind them. But what's now clear is that crucial factors were brushed aside. In the rush for profits, banks and traders chose to ignore the fact that these new products were based on the earnings of millions of homeowners who should never have been given so-called subprime mortgages in the first place. When interest rates increased in the US last year, large numbers of homeowners were unable to continue with their mortgage repayments and banks realised that these bundles of debt were built on unrealistic expectations. Undoubtedly short-sightedness, excessive risk-taking and greed helped to create the crisis, but the bigger problem is that the existing regulators who should have been keeping such vices in check just weren't up to the job. Central banks and supervisors probably didn't talk together enough, both in the domestic context and more importantly across international borders, to be able to spot that emerging crisis and deal with it before it became a real problem. So if the people in control of the financial sector are struggling to steer us clear of chaos, is it time to start paying attention to calls for increased regulation? Veteran investor and billionaire George Soros has been one of the most outspoken critics following the recent crisis. At the World Economic Forum in January, he called for an international sheriff to play the role of regulator, whilst Gordon Brown and other European heads of state have also threatened regulation. Nicolas Sarkozy even went as far as saying capitalism itself sometimes seemed out of control. But as good as these sound bites may be, are restraints on the free market really feasible? I think that's the kind of thing that happened on its own, you know. Um, the companies that are issuing, the, the banks that are working in these markets, the lawyers that are working on them, they're not local bank, they're not local players anymore. They're all international, they work in all these different markets, they know all the rules around the world, and they're all becoming close together over time. When that happens, it's, it's inevitable that the kind of regulations that, and listing rules that govern all these different exchanges will become closer over time. And actually, when you get to that stage, when you have a single set of rules pretty much created by the, by, um, the individual regulators and exchanges, um, that'll be the point at which you can say, well, OK, you know, we've got a single set of rules, let's have a set of a single body that can look at all of those and make sure they're followed around the world. Understandably, not everyone agrees that financial players will have the stomach to succumb to a single set of rules, let alone a single regulatory body. Most of the major banks may come to some agreement and they will more or less stick to it, but they don't have control over the whole range of banks that operate in different countries. And there's always rogue banks who, who don't keep to the rules. Whether they stick to the rules or not, bankers themselves seem to have little appetite for a global watchdog, believing that existing domestic regulators offer the best prospect for stability. I don't think an international single regulator is the right way to go. We have different types of banks and different sorts of cultures which have different roles in different societies. I think the answer is to look at how we can improve coordination between different domestic regulators so that where different regulators are supervising the same bank which is active across international borders, they all understand how that bank is facing up to the problems it sees. If anything is to curb the worst excesses of the market, undoubtedly evolution rather than revolution has the best chance for success. But further down the evolutionary path, is one global regulator really desirable? Um, that's the ideal. Everyone would love that. Just as everyone would like the fact that if the, the World Bank and the UN were the only political forces that mattered the world, but it doesn't really happen that way. Whatever grows out of the current crisis, the chances of establishing a single body to regulate the global economy are slim, at least in the immediate future. In a world that struggles to find agreement on issues as diverse as climate change and trade, the stiffest opposition will need to be overcome. In the meantime, the best that we can hope for is that those with the real power consider the effect that their actions could have on the rest of us. For NewsHour, I'm Sebastian Gordon.